Good morning and welcome to another thought for the day from New Milton Evangelical Free Church. We're continuing on our journey through Colossians chapter 1 and today we've reached verse 21. So we'll be reading shortly verses 21 and 22 together. But before we do that, let's come to God in prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this new day. We thank you for this new week and we pray that as we Look at your word now, you will equip us for that week. Help us to be prepared to walk in the light of Christ and to be useful to him in doing what he wants to do in this world so that we fulfil your purpose and we bring glory to his name. In his name we pray. Amen. So let's read Colossians chapter 1 verses 21 and 22. Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behaviour. But now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight, without blemish and free from accusation. Before and after pictures are very useful. Sometimes they can be quite misleading. I'm mindful of the old uh, adverts on the TV from a very early day and the days of TV with me go back quite some years where you had the washing powder advert and you had um, some little child standing in a white shirt that looked like it was perfectly white and compared with the one that was mud stained and had all kinds of grime on it it was indeed white, but then another child came and stood next to him and his shirt had been washed in this incredible new washing powder and its white outshone what apparently was not so white in the other child's t-shirt. So before and after pictures, here is what it looked like before it was washed, here is what it looked like after it was washed. Very useful if you're actually trying to sell something or if you're trying to actually show up a kind of truth. I'm mindful that a few weeks ago, our brother Tony uh, said this, there are two types of people in the world. There are the type of person who thinks there are two types of people in the world, and there is the type of person who doesn't think there are two types of people in the world. Well, a little tongue in cheek, and perhaps that's a uh, a lesser uh, useful comparison but our New Testament uses comparisons and they're very useful they're very instructive very informative one of the things it does is to compare what we are now with what we will be in the future in God's perfect plan so as we become more Christ-like and as eventually we go to be with him for eternity the New Testament in places compares the now with the not yet. What is now, what will be in the future, the now with the not yet. But another type of contrast is such as the one we see here, where what we are now in Christ, and if you've become a believer in Jesus, this is true of you. So what we are now with what we were, the now and the no longer. And very often, this kind of comparison is introduced by words such as once you were. And that's what we're going to look at this morning. So Paul says to these Colossians, having looked at who Christ is, he is now concerned with looking at who they are in Christ. And therefore he speaks to us. He says, this is who you are in Christ, if you are a believer in him. So once you were, three things, alienated from God, you, your mind was hostile to him, and your behaviour was evil. So alienated from God, your mind hostile to him, and your behaviour evil. So this distance between God and us, that is our natural state, is caused by our rebellion against him. And into that category we must also sweep the whole framework of the mindset of indifference. 
those who look at the world around them and want God not to be there. They want to ignore him so that all that they are accountable to is themselves and not a creator. And we see whole structures in society, in science, where people have gone to great effort and great ends to construct facts and figures in such a way that it dispenses with the need for God as an explanation as to why we are here and what we are about. Alienated from God. Distance, great distance. An alien is someone who is foreign to this land, someone who belongs somewhere else. And when you're alienated from God, you do not belong to him. There is distance between you and him. And this is evidenced in two ways. Uh, The verse may be actually translated so that it actually says, uh, you were enemies in your minds as shown by your evil behaviour. So it could be because of your evil behaviour or it could be as shown by your evil behaviour. And whichever way round it is, these two things dovetail together. The state of your mind is against God. It wants him out of the picture. It doesn't want him to be a part of your life. And as you live your life, what you're doing is you're making your own decisions, your own choices, according to what you think is right, according to what you think is reasonable, according to what you think is comfortable and acceptable to you. God is nowhere to be seen. He is outside of the picture. Or if he is there, he is there in a way that is impotent and sterile so that it has no effect on the outcome or the processes of our choices. Here's what you were, Paul says, before you believed in Jesus. But where are you now? Once you were like that, what has happened to you? What changes has God made in your life and this is where we actually begin to pick up the glory of God's word and the things in which the Christian believer can rejoice because God says he's done these things in your heart now he says you are reconciled to him you are holy in his sight you are without blemish and you are free from accusation holy in his sight without blemish free from accusation. Those three things are descriptive of what it means to be a Christian. Holy in his sight, so that distance has vanished. You are now as close to God as Jesus is. You are his child. You are his son or his daughter in Christ. There is nothing that separates you from him and he has changed you so that you are wholly acceptable. That's holy with a W in his sight and you are made clean every stain every spot that would have separated you from being accepted by him has been vanished away there's a soap isn't there called vanish you use it on stubborn stains and you rub the vanished soap into it and the stain gradually gets less and less until eventually it's disappeared and you swab off uh, the remainder of the soap and, and rinse it off with water you see how domesticated i am and uh, trained in household things be impressed well god says in his sight if you are a christian you are completely clean all that you have done in the past has been eradicated all of it has been washed away it is no longer there in his sight in your record and then thirdly you are free from accusation not the devil nor any human voice, nor any power or principality in the whole of the universe can point its finger at you and say, you do not deserve to belong to Christ. You are free from accusation. We may hear voices sometimes in our heads as we consider where we are in Christ. And they say, but you did this, or you did that, or look how you were in that situation, or this situation. These condemning voices, but in Christ they are stilled, they are silenced. No one can accuse you because you stand in him. Now what makes the difference between the first position and the second position? In between the two, there stands the cross 
of Jesus Christ. You see what it says? He has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight. What happened to you, Christian, to make you change from person A to person B? Jesus happened. The cross happened. And you became aware that when he died on that cross, it was for you. It was for your sins. It was so that your past would be dealt with. It was, was so that all of the things that kept you away from fellowship and communion with the living God would just be dissipated and buried in the deepest sea. There's so many pictures in the Bible of what God has done with our sins. The, mo the least of them say, they are far removed from us, never to bother us again. So here you are this morning, holy in your sight, without blemish, and free from accusation. If you're not a believer, don't you want this? This communion with God, this knowledge of him that enriches you, that accomplishes in your life all that he means for you to be and answers all of your questions. Believe in Jesus, turn to the cross, see that he died for you and accept his gift of forgiveness and salvation. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, bring these things to our hearts embed them in our thoughts so that we cannot escape them burn them into our consciences so that we know that if we believe in jesus we are yours forever and nothing condemns we are holy in your sight because his righteousness clothes us help us to walk in that light today and to praise you for all we are worth in his name we pray amen